A&W of A&W root beer fame was founded in Lodi uh, near Stockton, California, up the road a ways. But this was one of the locations that uh, was, well, I think some of the imagery, some of the scenes in American graffiti probably had this place in mind because it was opened in 1958 and it would have been right in the wheelhouse of that era of the cruising era at the height of its popularity. What's even more interesting is that it still has the old uh, outdoor ordering kiosk. I really doubt if they work anymore, but let me tell you, this is real history right here with this spot. In continuous operation since uh, 1958. Let's take a little bit of a closer look. of happy days. Amazing. This place is still around. I'm guessing they set up a band and things in uh, cruise nights. Rock and roll. There it is, a real piece of history. Love that name, Bad Boys Bail Bond. Suddenly, I'm in the wrong end of town. <laughs> no wonder I'm enjoying it so much. <laughs> Digging Modesto. Got a little wang back here. This is the place for bail bonds. Joanna's too. get a mid-morning coffee. Let's see if we can find a cool little coffee bar down here. Preservation coffee. Yeah. How are you doing Morning, today? good. I got my coffee. I was commenting to the guy, preservation coffee, nice guy. I said, oh, it's so nice and neat and clean. And they told me I'd be uh, in a crime area and there would be homeless hanging all over me. He said, yeah, it's, it's gotten a little better. But uh, I came into work today and one of our tables and chair sets is missing here from the front. So I don't know. I guess I, guess I spoke too soon. I don't know. A cup of coffee. But it, it, it does appear to be a very neat and tidy town for sure. And I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying my time in Modesto.
here again on the steps of the beautiful McHenry Library, what was formerly the McHenry Library, and is now, of course, the museum open on weekends. But this place is very significant because it gave two different people in two different generations ideas in their head that were, go that were destined to change the world. One in a business way and one in a Hollywood way. Let's talk about the business way first. Back in the 1930s when Ernest and Giulio Gallo, brothers growing up here in the Modesto area, were really trying to figure out what are we going to do with our lives. And in 1933, they noticed being good Italian boys that prohibition was ending. And that meant that alcohol would start to flow freely and wine is alcohol and the brothers reasoned because a lot of companies had gone out of business during the Great Depression it should be pretty easy pickings to start a winery and let's get into business they looked into the idea they borrowed a few dollars from family members I don't know how they convinced them in 1933 in the depths of the depression lend us some money we want to go into business and make wine I just wonder their hair didn't stand on end right but they managed to get a few dollars, but they didn't know anything about winemaking. So they came here to the McHenry Public Library and they asked at the reference section, do you have any books on making alcohol or making wine? And the librarian at that time said, Man, we wiped out all of our books on making alcohol and wine, and moonshining and whiskey because of prohibition brothers were really dejected they were on their way out the door and the woman's like wait I remember there was a pamphlet that was written by a professor at uh, University of California Davis campus which is famous for its viticultural program their wine growing program world renowned there was an obscure pamphlet that was written by a professor there and she said this may be of use to you they got the pamphlet and well, <laughs> as the Gallo brothers said in the beginning, the first batch they made grape juice, the second batch they made vinegar, and the third batch they started making <laughs> wine. Well, the rest is history. Ernest and Julio Gallo went on to found what is the largest wine company, winery operation in the United States, headquartered here in Modesto, California and world famous yes some people say, oh it's the jug wines it's not the nice wines you know napa and sonoma county but uh, it is wines they are uh, wines that are used for blending uh, and for other purposes but you can't argue with success let's talk about another cultural icon george lucas born and raised here in modesto california and when he was young, he loved to come to the McHenry Library and take out books on science fiction, and particularly ones that uh, had to do with Flash Gordon. And he was very taken, as many boys were in the 1950s, with uh, science and outer space. And the space program was just taken off with the Atlas rockets and all the excitement of blast off for the first time, people seeing rockets. This really fascinated George Lucas and the books that he checked out in the library, also one included the works by Tolkien, J.R. Tolkien, were really influential in creating a mind fertile enough to envision a galaxy far, far away and what we eventually know as the Star Wars series. It became, well, the most popular series in the history of motion pictures and launched George Lucas into the icon we know today. He's also uh, famous, of course, for American graffiti, but all that wouldn't have happened, right? Except for one incident that occurred a little bit up the road, a little ways out of town here. Let's talk about that, how that incident change the course of cultural history. The intersection of Rexford Road and Sylvan Avenue may not mean a lot to you, but as I mentioned earlier, George Lucas's life was forever changed with an incident that happened 
at this T-bone intersection here. Just a little more background. George Lucas's father had started what became a very successful stationery and office supply store in downtown, right in the heart of downtown Modesto. The L.M. Morris Company, highly successful. And as the family's fortunes grew, George Lucas's father wanted to have a nicer home in a quieter area, away from all the noise and congestion of downtown Modesto. And at that time, Sylvan Road, where I am now, was really out in the countryside. It was way out, five miles outside of downtown Modesto. Well, the idea of moving out here did not sit well with George Lucas because it meant that his trips back and forth to Downey High School would take longer. He'd have to get up early in the morning by traffic and he was not happy about the move out here to Rexford, Rexford Road outside of Modesto. But the other thing too is he really enjoyed drag racing and he really enjoyed cruising and he bought himself a little Fiat car and for his junior year and senior year of high school, it's the way that he liked to spend his uh, weekends cruising in downtown Modesto. Well, on June 17th of 1962, as he came up McHenry Avenue, which is like the main street of Modesto, he made a right-hand turn onto Sylvan, the road I'm on now, and as he came up to Rexford Road, where he lives, right here, he went to turn, and a friend who was racing him beside him in his Ferrari, his friend tried to pass him as he was stopped to make the turn here on Rexford. His friend hit the back of Lucas's car, sent it into a spin, and the car rolled over three times. And uh, well, the event was so catastrophic that it made the front page of the Mo Modesto B newspaper. George Lucas was very lucky that he survived that incident. On the first flip, he was wearing a seatbelt, but his Ferrari, his, his Fiat was not a super well-built car, right? Most little import cars weren't at that time. But he had his seatbelt on. The first time the car flipped, the seatbelt held. The second time that the car flipped, the seatbelt broke. And they theorized if that seatbelt had not broken, he would have absolutely been crushed to death by the end of the third flip. Well, this was, quite a, this was quite a tragedy for the family. He was taken to a hospital. You can see the picture of the uh, vehicle here. It's not a very great picture for the time, taken from the Modesto V, but you can see how horrific that accident was. You can imagine how bad his friend felt too, having raced and passed and hit the car and resulted in the car flipping over and well, George Lucas ended up with blood in his lungs, minor fractures, and well, hooray for us. As a result of that accident, he had wanted to be a professional race car driver and always be involved in automobiles. But after that accident, well, it had a way of changing his outlook on the life. And he told his father, you know what? I thought I wanted to be a race car driver not going to go into the stationary business, but I think I best go on to college. Well, the rest is history, but that love of American graffiti always stuck in his mind. And he did eventually go on to college and meet people like uh, Francis Ford Coppola, who was a mentor to him and encouraged him and uh, put pressure on Universal Studio to produce and bring to the movie theaters American Graffiti, which um, George Lucas had managed to produce on a budget of just $700,000 in a movie has uh, well, grossed over $250 million over the years. 
But it took a lot of belief in uh, in George Lucas to make that happen. And once he, American Graffiti became a success, he was able to get uh, actors that were, really weren't known at that time. Uh, uh, Richard Dreyfuss, uh, Harrison Ford, Suzanne Somers, and uh, Ron Howard of uh, Happy Days, and Cindy Williams, and just a whole cast that went on to really great success, a lot of them in their own shows and in their Hollywood uh, careers. That American Graffiti really launched uh, George Lucas's career, and it, it had not been for this accident here, we may never have had American Graffiti or Star Wars. Interestingly enough, American Graffiti, although it was set in uh, 1962 in Modesto, the city of Modesto did not want to get involved with the filming and have it taken up the streets and things. Shame on you, Modesto. They ended up going to San Rafael which is just north of the Golden Gate Bridge. That lasted one night and the, uh, the elders of San Rafael said, no way you're shooting that another night here because they would begin their filming at 9 p.m. at night and go till six in the morning and there was loud disturbances, cars. They ended up going up the road a little bit to my county, town of Petaluma, California, where most of the exterior scenes were filmed for American Graffiti. Isn't it amazing the twists and turns that history takes and the things that happen as a result of events that we never foresee, but their impact on history is tremendous. There has been no more successful movie franchise in the history of Hollywood than Star Wars. And American Graffiti continues to go on and be ever popular in reruns. They have cruiser nights here and uh, get togethers. They're trying to bring cruising back here to Modesto and make it sort of a functional event that doesn't get out of control and doesn't cause the problems that, well, in 1990, led to the banning of cruising. So one can only hope that what a icon of a California culture, that whole thing of cruising is, that you grow up in what's then a relatively small town and to take advantage of your free time that you have, there's not a lot of options, but a lot of people turned and became motorheads as a result of that. And well, we have the legacies that we have today, all because of uh, what happened here on Sylvan Avenue and Rexford Road in Modesto, California. It's kind of curious. I decided to drive down to the Gallo Winery, wine operations here on Santa Rosa. Uh, Santa Rosa, what is that? Santa Rosa Avenue. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? And Yosemite Boulevard here, and I tell you, this is this is an enormous operation. They even have their own uh, power substation over here. The supply and this, uh, oh, you can smell the wine in the air. Just take a little walk along here, but uh, everything is pretty secure. But uh, that's, you know, nosy rosy. Of course, I've got to look around lot number nine you can definitely smell fermentation in the air lord knows how many lots they have pretty nice cars it must pay well look at the size of this building the scale of this is just enormous the amount of grapes that they must process look at this all these lots nothing out on Yosemite Boulevard there was tons of uh, badge reader there was tons of more buildings and stuff over there you know you're using a lot of power when you get your own uh, substation
shits and giggles while I ask for a tour here. <laughs> uh. ooh, ooh, ooh. They like all this kind of stuff, right? Look at those, uh, look at that catwalk up there. Amazing. Where do you go for the tour? No, no tour here. Where do you go for the retail shop? No, no tour here. Retail to buy wine. Where's the shop? Go to the uh, general outlet downtown. Not here. Oh, so this is where they produce it all, huh? Yeah. What a big operation they have. No tours? All right, well, let him go. I'm going to walk around a little bit, take a look. Nice chap, not the most talkative guy in the world, but then again, I make up for it. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how this little house escaped being part of the whole operation. Funny enough, they got their uh, grapevines growing here on the fence. It's like the only house in one square mile here. I don't even know if anybody might be abandoned, I don't know. Crazy looking. But there it is, what an operation. Let's walk a little further up here. This looks like an administration building. So this is what wine looks like on a global scale. What California does in massive, massive uh, quantities. Seems like in theory it'd be a cool place to work, but at the end of the day, who knows? I'm sure they got their pressures like everybody else. Got the wine of the day, huh? <laughs> you got the wine of the day today. <laughs> he doesn't seem real enthusiastic. I don't know. Just enormous. Absolutely enormous. Time to roll on, yeah, I just wanted to make sure it was big, really big. And it's really, really big because you're just seeing one road. I, I literally drove down a mile of just huge buildings. Uh, like the one behind me, uh, the one over here on this side. So, boys, you done good from 1933, getting that little pamphlet out of the McHenry Library. How to make wine. You done damn good. Damn good. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing for sure. Just ask my BFF Janet. This place gets hotter and hotter than Hades in summertime. And unlike Santa Rosa and where she lives now in the Fairfield area, this place doesn't get the marine lair and that nice cooling nature's air conditioner. It doesn't reach here in Modesto. And you're talking about uh, temperatures in the 90s overnight stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of roasters, it's also home to uh, Foster Farms, which is the biggest processor of chickens west of the Mississippi here in uh, the Modesto area. Also, the uh, Save Mart Corporation, one of the biggest grocery uh, retailers wholesalers in the nation it was founded here in Modesto California so a lot of success stories because uh, Save Mart is a multi-billion dollar operation as is the uh, Gallo wine. All right let's get moving. After all that touring 
back to the checking into the hotel and here we are it's this nice I did treat myself a little bit this trip as opposed to the usual prison industrial complex it's pretty nice not that I'm going to use it uh, but they do have uh, it does have a hot tub here over there you just see the corner of it there's uh, the big road out there. It's pretty nice, huh? I'm gonna have a cup of coffee in a minute. A nice clean big bathroom. It's nice. A nice hot shower. Sometimes you just got to treat yourself right, huh? <laughs> Woo! Hope you rested up. Yeah, I took a little break, did a little video editing, and now we're off to A&W and to wrap up our visit with Modesto with a little bit of night video. How about it? First, we've got the obligatory elevator shot. <laughs> Tell you one thing for sure, this traffic in Modesto is no joke. And I'm not even on Route 99 yet. They tell me sometimes that thing is like a parking lot over there. We'll see. Stop and go, stop and go, stop and go in Modesto. crazy 99 I've heard people complain about it now I get it doing a crisp 14 miles an hour Pull that up and check it out We got burgers, appetizers. Yeah, this baby's pretty sketch. Let's see combo meal, giants. I think that comes with fries. I guess I'll get the giant meal. People. So I did end up getting a combo for about $8. So this is just the iconic experience here. Snow White. I sure as hell found the sketchy end of town. We've had a guy T-bone a uh, fuel, a big 18-wheeler uh, fuel truck. Holy crap. Right out here. There's the liquor store. Luigi's Pizza. How about that? That's just the way that bad boy comes out. Just like that. Right over top of the fries. How cool. Let's give this a go.
meat's got excellent flavor. Big ass burger and fries for like uh, eight bucks all in. You might want to bring a security guard with you. Guys, I thought I would sit in the vehicle, make sure the door's locked, and do my uh, review of it. Damn, this is, I don't even know where to begin with this. This is just an amazing dining experience for the price of uh, where I come from. $12, $18 burgers. I had one of the most delicious burgers I've had in years. This thing exceeded uh, In-N-Out Burger. And uh, wow, the meat flavor was excellent, and the fries were pretty good too. I would highly recommend coming to this place. Uh, you might do better to come in the daytime or bring a little personal uh, protection. Uh, I did, I don't know where in the hell it is. Where in the hell is it? Let me see. Where did I put it? Hold on. Butterfinger strikes again. <laughs> <coughs> How is it? I don't know where it is. I got it somewhere there. There it is. I threw it back in my pepper spray just in case. That I assessed the situation coming down. And uh, the people were real nice inside. And wow, that was a great burger for the uh, great burger for the price. Unbelievably tasty. Somebody really knows what they're doing. You have to do something good to survive from 1952 to the present day. Especially with everything that's going on in the world and um, charging excellent prices uh, to boot. The only disappointment, and this is what keeps it from a, well, it's nine star just because of the area. I don't want anybody to get their car jacked or get jacked up over here. Uh, get jumped or something because, uh, you know, it's getting eyeballed on the street there. So that's why I'm doing the review in the van. But the soda was flat. It was surprisingly poor. I had a diet uh, Pepsi, and uh, the quality was just uh, not that uh, not that good. But uh, the overall dining experience was outstanding. Worth the drive. Worth the risk in the hood. Do it up, man. Hood dining sometimes it's the best that it can be, right in the hood. Let's get out of here.
up my Modesto adventure. I hope you enjoyed those various night scenes in and around town. I tell you what, a city is more than just a collection of places to visit. And I came into Modesto with the idea that there was going to be homeless everywhere and uh, the chances of something bad happening were going to be high but quite honestly where I live at home is a quantum leap above in terms of risk on the streets and things but that's not a this this video is not about risk this video is about a town that demonstrated to me that if you're a hard-working town which this town seems to be People seem to be generally cheerful everywhere I've gone. Everybody's been uniformly kind. And I've just have been impressed to no end with the city of uh, Modesto. So far exceeded my expectations. It's unbelievable. Am I glad I came? You bet I am. Would I come again? Not necessarily. But... I now have a real appreciation for Janet and her growing up. Got one there. Do have an appreciation for Janet and where she grew up and hung out back in the day. It really uh, rounds out my ideas of her a little bit. So, on that note, I want to thank you for being along, hitting the road tomorrow. More journeys ahead. Bye bye, Modesto. Thumbs up or appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, make sure to uh, subscribe. <laughs> Hit the bell so you don't miss any of the videos. Thanks again, everybody.